All right, so I wanted to do a video on some hidden features that are built into the Enphase app that I'm guessing most of our customers and many of you watching this probably don't know about. Uh, Enphase has a lot of cool things hidden in the background that you don't always get to look at on a regular basis and you don't typically need to, but they are cool to check out once in a while, especially when you have a brand new system because you get to see some granular data within these hidden features. So what I'm gonna do is screen share my phone so that way you can see where these settings are and you can check them out for your solar system. Of course, if you're someone that's interested in going solar or getting battery backup with your existing solar system, go ahead and visit us online by using the link down in the description below. We're in the business of helping you go renewable with clean energy. So use that link in the description below and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so once you're in your Enphase app, basically what you're going to wanna do is you get logged in and you're gonna get loaded right into this home screen. So this home screen that you have is giving you your general overview of what's going on in that particular moment. And you can see right off the bat, you, if you have batteries, you can see the status of your battery charge. Uh, you can see what profile you have set and you can dive deeper into these items. This particular site that I'm referencing has uh, four IQ10 batteries, so they have about 42 kilowatt hours of storage capacity, and they have a massive like 15 or 16 kilowatt solar system. So they have a very big solar to compare with. Now you can click on life status. Not all sites, if you have older microinverters, you may not see this little live status button up in the top right. Enphase is having some server uh, updates going on as I'm recording this video. So some of the features aren't presently available because of those updates. But if you scroll down, you can see this particular site has a grid dependence. So you can change that if it's easier to understand. I think it should be defaulted as independence, but Enphase defaults it as grid dependence. And basically if it's dependence, it's telling you how much you're using of the grid and so the number should be lower. And then if it is independence, then the, it's showing you how much of the, uh, how little of the grid you're using. So the number should be higher because you're using your solar and your batteries. And then below that, it kind of just talks about, you know, how much carbon emissions you're saving, how many trees you're saving, and so on and so forth. But this is your general overview. You have your import from the grid, your production from your solar system, what's going on with the batteries, and your consumption for your home if you've exported any energy at that particular time. As you go through these buttons along the bottom on your phone, you'll be able to cycle through day, weeks, monthly details on what's going on with your system and get a good idea of how energy efficient you're being and how effective your solar system is being with or without batteries. So if you don't have batteries, you won't see some of this data. And then down here, you can toggle things on and off with these toggle switches. So you may not have these items on, so you might need to toggle them. And then depending on who did your solar installation, for our customers, we try to always install the consumption CTs. And we've been doing that for two or three years now since Enphase has been including them with the uh, combiner boxes. But not all electrical panels were able to install the consumption CTs. So if you, if you have an older electrical panel and you get solar, you may or may not be able to have the consumption CTs, but definitely ask your installation company to install them if they're able to. Uh, like I said, we try and do it by default. If you're getting batteries, you almost always will have consumption CTs. At, that data is required for the batteries to work effectively. And yeah, so obviously you can go in and create custom reports and whatnot. If you look at the array, for this site, you can see how big it is. These are LG 440 watt Neon 2 modules, or I'm sorry, Neon R, and they were using the IQ7A microinverters. This was right before the transitions to the IQ8s, but that's not that big of a deal. And you can go through and see the production and individual details of these panels. Now, Enphase used to not 
actually include the information that you're seeing here where it says 2.4 kilowatt hours or 2.44 kilowatt hours. Uh, it used to just be a color grade. So that way you kind of had an indicator if the panel is working or not. The brighter the panel, so the lighter the blue is, the, the more efficient it's being, the more production it's generating. The darker the panel, if it's all the way black, it's probably not working. So in this site, all the microinverters, all the modules are reporting properly. Now this is where some of these hitting features can be at. So when you go under menu, you have system, settings, account, you have some other stuff going on in here. The refer a friends feature is sadly trash. Enphase does nothing with that information. So if you have an installer that you were really happy with, uh, a lot of our customers refer to us. You don't use the refer friends within the Enphase app. It goes nowhere. It doesn't go to the installer. Enphase doesn't do anything with it. If they're watching this video, hopefully they'll take some of this criticism because I I find it frustrating that you click here and it's right there for you to share a link for your friend that might want to go solar and it goes to nobody. It should go to the installer that did the system. Um, so, but anyway, so we're getting off topic. That's not a hidden feature. If you have any alerts, you're going to see them up here. Like I said, Enphase has some server maintenance going on. So not all the features are available. We can go ahead and dismiss that. Now this is what I'm talking about. You're going to go under system. And from system, you can see you have like site details, reports, devices, live status, live vitals. Now the two hidden features is devices and live vitals. So what I want to show you first is devices. So if we go into devices, you can see your gateway, which is communicating to the internet. You can see all the batteries on the site. You can see your controller. The controller is your automatic transfer switch and then all the microinverters. Now you can dive into each one of these and see the individual modules and, and get get information. Now for an installer, we get more information. We can actually see the power output, but you don't need it as long as you can see it's working. Now with the batteries, you do get some, they do share some more information. So if we go into the batteries, you can see that the usable energy of the four IQ10 batteries is 40.32 kilowatt hours, and that's 12 uh, batteries in total. So it's 12 IQ3 batteries. And that's a lot of storage, to say the least. And it tells you how much power you have available based upon your batteries. Remember, Enphase is modular. So if a battery unit fails or a microinverter within a battery unit fails, the power output will adjust, not the whole battery goes down. That's one of the cool features with Enphase. And that's really nice for you to know. And you can see here's the model numbers um, as you cycle through. And like I said, the servers are down sadly, or they're doing updates. So you're not getting as consistent information, but you can see the state of charge each battery is at. So you can see some of these batteries at like 1.44 kilowatt hours and the max per IQ3 would be 3.36. And then you can see the active microinverter. So each IQ3 battery has four microinverters built into it and that gives you your power output. So with those four microinverters, you're looking at 1.28 kilowatts. The more batteries you have, the more storage you have, the more power output you have. Now, the, with the 5P, this information will still be here, but you're gonna see six microinverters instead, you'll have a higher power output, and you'll see five kilowatt hours per battery unit. And yeah, so this is a really cool place to go and just check and make sure everything's working. This is also where you would go if you needed to change your Wi-Fi information. So uh, that's really helpful for you if you changed your Wi-Fi network, you can just do it yourself and go right in, into the settings. Now the other hidden feature, if we go back to devices, is live vitals. This may or may not work because of the servers. I was playing around with it, it did look like it works, it just looked like it was a little bit delayed. So right when you open it, don't freak out if you see some errors. Uh, it takes a while for the system to kind of gather these live vitals. But basically what the live vitals are doing is telling you the status of what mode you're in, you know, if you're on grid, off grid, and then it tells you what circuits are opened or closed uh, depending on that particular situation. Is the solar on? Is the batteries on? Um, are you in backup mode and such? So you can see right here that what the grid frequency is, what the microgrid parameters are. Here are the individual batteries. You can see there's charging. You can see how much they're charging. Uh, and obviously it'll be a negative number because they're pulling power from the solar. 
So I think this is a really cool place to check out. Now, the IQ batteries are wireless and the new 5P battery is going to be hardwired. So these show you that wireless connectivity strength. What's interesting on this particular site is actually all the equipment, it's in the garage, so you have the transfer switch on one side and the combiner box which communicate with the batteries wirelessly and the batteries are literally on the other wall of the garage. So it's, it's interesting to see that the signal strength is different even though it's literally just right across the wall. I mean, what's the normal width of a garage? Like uh, 20 feet, I think, or, or maybe 10 feet? I, I honestly don't know. I think they're 10 feet wide, a little over 10 feet wide and then 20 feet deep. But regardless, you know, you can at least see the parameters of this. And if you had a battery issue, this is a great place to check that out and see what exactly is going on. So. That's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted to talk about some of these hidden features that are within the Enphase app. A lot of our customers, you know, ask us how to interpret the data. There's not much to interpret. It's just, it's there for you to review. There's, there's nothing you need to do besides, you know, check it out and make sure your system's working. Make sure there's no alerts. There are automations built in. Enphase is monitoring the system. We are monitoring the system. So if we see some abnormalities, we can automatically open a case. In some cases, Enphase will go ahead and open a case ahead of us. So, you know, it's a, it's a good platform at the end of the day. And I think these hidden features, that are here are really helpful for those of you, especially if you're expecting certain equipment from an installer. You know, if they told you you were gonna get IQ8As or IQ8Hs, this is how you would be able to check within the device settings in that hidden setting to confirm you got the microinverters that you were contracted to get because that will make a big difference in the performance of your system overall. And I've heard some pretty bad horror stories about people not getting the right microinverters and not finding out for years later. So, well, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in going solar or getting battery backup, please visit us online by using the link down in the description below. Of course, subscribe to our channel as we have a lot of great content coming out later this year.